So welcome to part two of the tool review of the Vavor diesel heater. Um, yesterday's video, I focused on just setting this up in the shop, showing you how I did that because everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different, but I wanted people to see how I did it. Um, today's video is going to focus on efficiency and whether or not something like this will work in your shop. There's going to be a lot of variables and contingencies to the information um, pertain to how this worked for myself. So I want to have full disclosure on my situation, my shop situation, my climate situation, before you go out and purchase one of these, because the units themselves, especially if you buy the cheaper version of this, where all the parts are separate and you have to put it together in your shop, are not extremely expensive, but then you have to add on some sort of power supply. I had to buy a diesel gas uh, a gas container diesel to hold the diesel, and those are surprisingly expensive. And then obviously you have to buy the diesel. So if you're buying everything outright, you're already at over probably $200 before you even get up and running, and it will be pretty upsetting if, if that unit doesn't work for you. So this intro is going to be fairly short because then I'm going to change the view and we're going to talk about what's going on in my shop. And um, I did make an Excel spreadsheet because I've been tracking the temperatures, the highs and lows for the day, which will affect the temperature in the shop. And um, as well as how warm I got it in the shop and the settings I ran it on. So it's going to be a lot of information. It's not gonna be full of a bunch of fluff. It's, it's a very technically based video. If that's not your thing, don't watch it. But if you wanna get a real world situation on how this works in a space and then compare it to your space and decide that if this is a smart purchase, then uh, this is the video for you. So first things first, and I realize I'm quite far away from the camera, but I wanted people to get an idea of the size of my shop. I want to talk about my shop. So I work in a shop that's about 20 feet by 20 feet, and the ceilings in the back of the shop are a little over 10 feet, and there's a gradual slope to the front of the shop where they average around nine feet. Um, God only knows what the ceiling's made of. The house was built in 1950. It's some sort of material I've never encountered before, and there's no second story. So there's an air gap, which is um, a little convenient for my situation, and then obviously a roof. So the ceiling's kind of a question mark. This back wall is the only wall in the shop that currently has insulation, and that is because I had to soundproof the shop from the rest of the house. This back wall shares a wall with the uh, dining room, and that is because people are working in the home during the day and they couldn't hear the sound of the tools. Soundproofing this back wall worked amazingly. I have no issues with running anything and disturbing anyone. And it had the added bonus of I did insulate it, which was part of the soundproofing. So I have a two by four wall with five eighths inch drywall on this back wall and the R value of the insulation is a 13. So this back wall is insulated, that's it. This side wall you see, there's two windows, they're identical, but the bonus thing is, is they are newer windows, so they're double pane. You don't really feel any drafts or anything coming through the window. There's two on this wall. The entire shop, except for this back wall, which is insulated, is cinder block on the inside and brick on the outside. So the walls are nice and thick, but the cinder block and the brick have, I believe each one is below a one for the R value. So not a lot of insulation, but that is these, these two walls. So two windows and block and brick. So you're not gonna be able to see it in the video when I'm talking, cause I have a huge built-in over here, which is blocking the light. But this back wall is the exact same as the wall you just saw. Um, this used to be an exterior wall, but there's a sunroom on the other side, but the sunroom is only heated by um, a natural gas heater at nighttime. So the, the room on the other side, this is not hooked up to the HVAC and actually gets colder than the shop. So there is the original uh, window over there, which soundproofing, I covered that with drywall and um, a moving blanket. And the door that originally went to the outside, same thing, drywall and moving blanket and then cinder block and brick on the outside, exact same situation as the other wall. 
So then towards the front of the shop, I have a garage door. So this is gonna be pretty thin. There's probably some insulation in between the panels, but not enough to make that much of a difference. And in the two corners, um, the cement pad is actually settled a little bit. So there is some air, where there are actual air gaps are around this, this uh, garage door. You can see daylight in certain spots. And then obviously I showed you the wall that's behind this built-in, which is going to be the exact same thing, cinder block and brick. So that's basically what I am working with, a 20 by 20 shop, about, we're gonna say 10 foot ceilings, um, cement floor, little to no insulation, and, um, and that's, that's big, but I do have newer windows on this side, which is a huge bonus the the side where the the sun is going to rise over here where i live so i really don't get sun hitting the building and warming up this wall till late in the afternoon but it does help keep it warm in here um, but that doesn't happen till later in the afternoon so then lastly before i start up this heater and i kind of show you some of the sounds because i was new to to using diesel heaters diesel engines in general so i wasn't used to some of the sounds i'm going to show you what to expect when you when you start one of these up um, is climate which is going to be important and i don't see this sort of stuff discussed in these videos a lot i live in southwestern new jersey um, specifically i'm about 10 minutes outside of philly so if you kind of want to use a popular location as um, a starting point you could use philly weather it's pretty much identical to here so that's the climate i'm in it's the northeast but since i'm on the southern side of the northeast i'm obviously going to have very different temperatures than someone who says lives in, let's say in boston um, this winter has been unseasonably warm on average i believe i saw a graph about it the other day we're about 10 degrees warmer than normal so obviously i'm not going to have used this heater as much as i would for other winters and of course it's unseasonally warm because as soon as i have a shop that somewhat holds the heat and is easy to heat up it's going to be warm that that is the type of luck i have so that is important. I've seen people put these heaters in pole barns in Minnesota that are 40 by 40 with no insulation and 10 plus ceilings, and they're surprised they don't work. Of course, they're not gonna work. You have to have some starting criteria in order for these to work. Like I said, they're designed to go in RVs, which are smaller spaces. So I lucked out, it's a two car garage. It's small enough that it heats it up but big enough for me to work. If I had a space much bigger than this one, and or if I had a space much bigger than this one in a colder climate, I think with my experience of running this, I would probably need two heaters. I would think it was worth it to get two, but um, especially next year, if we go back to more normal temperatures, I think I'm gonna be running this a lot more. Um, and I could get a better gauge on it. But for right now, with my experience, like I said, in a, in a shop much bigger than this one, you know, insulation will come into play. I don't have a lot of that right now. I am planning on putting some foam on these walls, but God only knows when that's gonna happen. Um, so that, that's kind of the basic starting point. Once again, southeastern New Jersey, unseasonably warm winter. Um, we've been having highs during the day in the in the 40s, low 50s is, is pretty much been the average. Lows at nighttime have rarely dipped below uh, freezing. And then um, once again, the, the specifics of my shop. So take all that information, compare your situation to it. And um, if it's much different than mine, I would consider something a little different than, than this for heating, or you might have to buy multiple units. And then lastly, I do not have a lot of experience with diesel engines, so all of these noises at first, I was Googling all sorts of things. Once you turn it on, it takes about a minute or so, and then you'll hear this clicking. This clicking is the fuel pump pumping fuel into into the heater and this will get very very loud for a couple minutes and then as it gets um, to uh, as it starts pumping out warmer air right now it's pumping out cooler air because it's sucking cooler air through and pumping out cooler air 
Once the, the gas starts going through and the engine warms up, this will obviously turn into warmer air and then it gets a little quieter. Personally, the noise level of this does not bother me. Um, the propane heater, which I was using for a couple years before this, was 10 times louder than this. So for myself, this is actually quiet, but it is louder at first and then it will calm down. I've seen videos with people showing the, uh, the exhaust red hot and smoke coming out of this. I've had no issues whatsoever with this unit for the amount of time I've run it. You can see now it's starting to get warmer heat coming through. It's gonna get a little louder and then it will, it will calm down. So then after a few minutes when everything's up to temperature and good, we have plenty of warm air pumping out the front this is about the sound level you're going to have for three and then obviously if i turn it up it will get a little louder but that's it that's basically how loud um, it's going to get like i said these were designed for rvs so they run off 12 volts i'll show you how i i did that in the shop but i've had this like i said since jan uh, december 6th it is now almost february and i've had the only problem i had with it was i got an error message and i believe this will be in the footage i let the gas run too low it couldn't pump any gas and um an error message popped up so it was my fault but that's about it so then yesterday I closely tracked this with it on a high at 6. I started a little late in the day, about 11 o'clock. My shop was at 50.9. Um, you could see where I am in Cherry Hill. We're having a little bit of cold weather now, but basically these temperatures are insane. It's averaging high 40, low 50 pretty much all winter. So my the shop has been holding the heat quite well. Most mornings I come and it's 50. About an hour later, we were at 53 degrees. It's still about 34 outside. And then... Um, I was kind of consistently checking these about one o'clock. I got up to around 56, so we're at about plus six degrees on the day. So it is a gradual rise in heat. It's not gonna rise it, uh, raise the temperature 10 degrees in an hour in a shop this size, but it's a consistent heat, which is nice. And then by about three o'clock, I was already up to 60. And at this point, the sun's coming in that window. So it will warm up the shop a little bit when it's especially sunny. Now I keep this temperature gauge back by the heater so I have moved it around the shop to make sure it's it's accurate. The nice thing about this heater is it consistently heats up the shop. You can see even towards the front by the door it's still at 62 degrees. In the back I got to about 63 on the day. So this is me tracking the whole time I used it. Like I said it's been warm. I've been out of the shop so I think there's about 20 days of using it. The most important figure on this I believe for if you want to know if this will work is going to be that starting inside temperature which I marked in red if you are starting out at 30 35 degrees I don't think you're going to see the kind of success I have and at the bottom you can see I'm I, I tracking the how much fuel is used in a day I apologize I had to film this on the computer because it was too far away filming the screen to see to see the graph um, at the end, I have a photo of it if you want to pause it and look at it. But I think I'm having such good success because this shop holds the heat. Starting off at 50 degrees, it raises it about three or four degrees every hour, and, it, and it's keeping it pretty warm. Like I said, if you're in a climate or you're building doesn't hold the heat or your building starts off really cold, I don't think this heater is going to work very well for you.